Okay, so let me break down the theory so you understand exactly what it is. Okay, here it goes. Our entire physical universe and our world, including our bodies, are all virtual. They are not real. They are simply a simulation. Existentially speaking, there are no atoms, molecules, cells, brains, organs, or anything. Everything we see is just data in a computer program. Your body is virtual. Space is virtual. And so is your house and so is your car. Shocking, I know. For those who are new to simulation theory, this could blow your mind. So strap in your seatbelt and hold on because Kansas is going bye-bye. Yeah, I love The Matrix too, but that movie is not an accurate representation of the simulation argument. So please don't try to compare it. <clears throat> anyway, getting back to the theory. The only thing that is fundamental in simulation theory is consciousness. All else is virtual. Now, I'm using words to describe a very complicated subject, so I understand if you have questions. If you don't understand, or if you don't have the same picture of it as I do, just leave your questions in the comments section and I'll try to respond to as many people as I can. Okay, so now we have this virtual world and universe where nothing is real. The virtual world we live in is being simulated by a computer elsewhere. We don't know where that is. If the computer is virtual, or real, or how long the simulation has been truly going on. We also don't know who or what is responsible for creating our world, or why it was created. The best information I could get on that last point is that our world was created for us to learn, grow, evolve, lose our fear, and become love. I know a hundred questions may be running through your head at this point. Believe me, I have my own questions. I'll leave them for the end, where I speculate on the answers. Anyway, like I said before, our consciousness is the only thing that is fundamental and not virtual. So we as conscious beings with free will, yes, we were created and given free will, decided to incarnate into a quote-unquote physical body and live a life on Earth. In a way, we could think of ourselves as avatars. Why? Because our fundamental essence is consciousness and not our bodies. Yet we identify ourselves with our bodies because that's all we know. But you existed as consciousness before the person you are now, and you will continue to exist after the death of your physical body. Just not exactly in the way you think. But that's for another video. I want you to know there have been countless examples throughout history of people leaving their body such as in near-death experiences and paranormal experiences. This proves that consciousness can leave the body and does not need one to exist. This assertion is in stark contrast to what all materialists believe, and I understand how it sounds, but I absolutely believe it, and I know some of you do as well. If you don't, and you think simulation theory is just a load of crap, that's fine. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to explain what it is. Okay, so let's summarize the theory. Our entire virtual universe is a simulation. It's being simulated by a computer elsewhere, meaning outside of the simulation. Remember, the computer and the simulation cannot exist in the same reality frame. It's just like a Sims game. The virtual characters in the game can never touch or feel the computer or even the code that created them. They can't climb outside the game. It's the same for us. Now, our consciousness decides to enter the virtual reality or simulation, I kind of use them interchangeably sometimes, and takes on a body. It then becomes fully immersed in the game and completely forgets about itself outside of it. This allows itself to be totally integrated into the game. By doing so, all the choices it makes truly matter as it believes this is the only life it has. 
By being fully immersed in the game, the consciousness inhabiting the body gets to make choices and deal with real-world consequences. By doing so, it learns, and either evolves and levels up, or de-evolves and levels down. The point of the game is to evolve, of course. And to do that, we need to make good choices from the being level. When our body or character dies, our consciousness still exists and returns to the reality frame it was in before we were born. Some people call this the afterlife, but it's just another virtual reality frame. You see, there are thousands of simulations within the computer. One of the world's leading experts on simulation theory, Tom Campbell, calls this computer the LCS, or Larger Consciousness System. Again, we don't know who made it, and we can't go outside it. I know some of you might be disturbed by that, but you shouldn't be. The virtual worlds or simulations created by this computer, or the LCS, were designed for one primary purpose. That is to allow us to express our free will, make decisions, learn, and evolve. What is the end game of it all? I don't know. Perhaps it's to evolve to a point where our consciousness eventually melts away and we no longer need to play the game. Similar to a raindrop splashing into the ocean, it loses its individual nature but becomes the entire ocean. So there you go. That's my take on the simulation argument. Now, let me answer some common questions that I've seen. Number one, why is there suffering in the simulation? I mean, the creator must be some type of sadist to have created a world like ours. That's a very good question, and I've seen it in the comment section. The creator didn't create the conditions we have on Earth now. The level of our quality of conscious, excuse me, of consciousness is the cause of most of the suffering on Earth. It's we who have decided to form gangs, go to war with each other, rob, lie, steal, maim, etc. It's our free will. Some of the other reality systems are not like ours. It's a much more civil world and a lot more caring with less violence. That's because the quality of consciousness in the players of those games is more highly evolved than ours. Hello, and welcome to today's workshop. Today we're going to be talking about managing big data for use in a front-end application. And we're going to be doing that by using a Netflix clone uh, as an example. So we'll be developing a Netflix clone using React, the Jamstack, and GraphQL APIs. So let's start with a few housekeeping things. Uh, today's workshop is going to be very much hands-on and we'll be working out of a GitHub repo. We'll have a link in the description to our GitHub repo, uh, and we'll be working out of that pretty regularly for this workshop. We'll also be using a tool called Gitpod. Now, our goal with these workshops is to make sure that there's nothing to install on your local machine. If you want to work locally, you absolutely can. There are some instructions in the GitHub repo, uh, just some dependencies that, we, that our project expects um, to make sure things are working. Ours is more akin to a virtual reality kindergarten. Number two, can we manipulate the simulation to our own liking? Are there cheat codes? The answer is yes and no. By using our conscious intent, we can sway the odds in our favor that something will happen that we want. Sometimes it will work, and other times it just won't. Why can't we do it all the time, you may ask? Because this is a multiplayer game, and there are other players using their intent to get the same thing you want. On some occasions, only one person can get it. 
Some people become powerful and can manipulate reality more than others. However, those people most likely won't elect to use their power for selfish reasons. It's interesting, the more power you get, the less you want to use it, as the more evolved spiritually you likely become. It's kind of a catch-22 in that way. What happens if we commit suicide is another common question I see. If we do, we'll find ourselves back in the reality frame we came before we were born. You'll be able to review your life, see the bad decisions you made, and then you can choose to return to the game and try again. That's really the case for anyone who dies here. But suicides are a bit different in that if you do it once, it becomes easier to do in the next lifetime. I'm personally against the idea of suicide unless the suffering is so great you no longer want to play the game. But that would be in very rare instances. Okay, another question. Do you go to hell if you really do bad things in this life, like commit crimes or even murder people? The answer may surprise you. It's no. You go back to the same reality frame and go through the same process as everyone. There is no punishment for being bad or reward for being good in the other reality frame. The punishment is really a crappy life here on Earth if you do something bad and knowing you de-evolve. The reward for doing good on Earth is living a happy, positive life here and knowing that you are evolving spiritually. But there is no hell, no devil, and no heaven where you eternally linger in the afterlife. You just keep on coming back to virtual realities and it's living lives over and over. It's also your choice to get back into the game, so to speak. But nearly everyone does at some point. How do we know we are living in a simulation? This is the last question I'll answer. Well, check out my other video for evidence. I'll put the link in the description below. But in general, we can tell because our universe is digital and not analog. And a digital universe is really a virtual universe. We have a, a smallest discrete measurement of time and size here, which is the Planck length and also for time. And the speed of light is constant. And there's also a speed limit to how fast things can travel. The quantum slit experiment is also evidence. And so is the fact that consciousness can exist perfectly outside the body. Some of the smartest people on Earth, like Elon Musk, Nick Bostrom, and Anthony Peake, believe we live in a simulation. It's time we start seriously considering the theory. I could go on talking about simulation theory and answering questions about it for hours, but I'll stop here. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below and give me a big thumbs up if you can. This tells me and YouTube that you like my content and want me to produce more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Miesięcznie. Oglądaj Kanal Plus Online. I'm Greg Secker, a successful currency trader, and I run a pretty successful YouTube channel where I recently made a staggering £67,000 in just one trading day. I posted this video on YouTube documenting the entire process and it quickly gained traction. People were amazed at this incredible achievement and flooded the video with positive comments. Many viewers were eager to learn the secret behind how I did this, asking if there was a way to be shown exactly how this impressive profit was made and the steps I took to do it. So due to popular demand, I decided to do exactly that. So I'm hosting a special masterclass to share the exact strategy used to make £67,000 in a single day. If you're interested in discovering the secret behind this, 
and many more daily money-making setups and systems, simply click the link below this video to register for the Masterclass. I'm gonna run this for a week, after which point I'm gonna pull it down. So if you want to learn this for free, you're gonna to need to register now. Welcome to Open Your Reality, where we look into the deepest mysteries of the universe. You know, I've always seemed to be fascinated by life. Since I was a kid, I wondered what the true nature of reality is. Like most of you, I was completely lost, and I know some of you still are. I want to help you see the light. I want to help you understand the deepest questions we all ask. What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? Is this world real or is it an illusion, like a simulation? If it is a simulation, what is its purpose? Stay tuned to the video for answers and stay subscribed as I will be putting out a lot more videos soon. I put out a couple of feeler videos and I got some great responses from you. Some of you left very encouraging comments, and a bunch of you subscribed. I was going to go on a different route and work on a different channel, but um, due to the wonderful engagement from you guys, I think I'm going to stay right here and make many more videos for you. So, just wanted to let you know that. Alright, back to the point of this video. You know, when I was a kid, the internet didn't exist. So books were the only real source of information I had. I devoured them, taking in more than a book a week in my prime reading days. I read books on science, philosophy, quantum theory, religion, mysticism, conspiracy theory, which was one of my favorites, and, and more. The information I was reading blew my mind. I tried to connect the dots, but my picture of reality was still a bit hazy. Each book offered a different picture of the nature of reality. I could see an underlying theme though. We are all consciousness. We are here to grow and evolve. There is an afterlife, and we are all connected. Those concepts seemed to vibe with me, and I carried them with me as I aged into my 30s and 40s. I continued to read books, and when YouTube came of age, I began watching videos. I now spend a lot more time watching videos than reading books. I'm not the only one though. My other friends do as well. I find that by watching videos I learn a bit easier, but reading is still great. My guess is that most people these days prefer consuming videos, which is why YouTube and other video platforms have been growing so much in the last decade. So a few years ago I was listening to a podcast that had on a speaker named Thomas Campbell. Some of you mentioned him in the comment section of my simulation video, e even before I mentioned him on my channel. For those of you who don't know Tom Campbell, he's a scientist and also an explorer of consciousness. I personally believe him to be one of the most important people on Earth today, as he is one of the only people I've ever read or seen in video to accurately describe the nature of reality in its truest form. In a future video that will be uploaded soon, I'll discuss the basic tenets of Campbell's theory. He calls it my big toe, with toe being an acronym for my big theory of everything. If you don't know anything about Campbell or simulation theory, what I'm, you know, what I'm about to say may sound hokey to you. But that's fine. Even Campbell said nobody should believe his theory. We should all remain healthily skeptical and do our own research. So right around the time I was learning about simulation theory, um, I came across Campbell through a podcast. It was Red Ice Radio, with Campbell as the guest, along with another researcher named Anthony Peake. 
who also explores the nature of reality. I, I found both men fascinating, but particularly Campbell. So I looked for more videos and was overjoyed to see that Campbell has a ton of content on his channel where he talks about his theory. The more I listened, the more I found myself believing that he had the answers I was seeking all my life. He was answering all the lingering questions I had, and the more I listened to him, the more I learned. Even to this day, he continues to put out new videos and answers difficult questions with poignant answers all the time. I'll give you one example before I get to his answers on the fundamental questions I posed near the beginning of this video. So someone asked him how we are supposed to cope with so much suffering in the world. We see horrible atrocities going on all the time, right? Wars, famines, natural disasters, genocides, etc. For sensitive people, those events can get you so down that you feel life isn't worth living. Especially because there's often not much you can do to help. Have you wondered this yourself? Campbell said, you just need to live your life and realize that those people are going through their own spiritual growth. Everything that happens on earth is a learning process, and even death and suffering are a part of that learning experience. And that can really help our consciousness evolve. I never really thought of it that way myself, but it does help. Though when I reflect on some of the books I read, I do remember a brief story about Swami Nityananda. Of all the spiritual paths available, the yogi path of Swami's always appealed to me the most. So I read a lot of books on yogis, the best one being the Autobiography of a Yogi. Some of you may know that book. Maybe I'll make a video about all that one day. Anyway, Swami Nityananda was a very powerful spiritual figure in the area of India he lived. The time of the story took place around the 1940s or 50s. The story goes that a baby, perhaps a few months old, had gotten sick in the village and it looked like it might be terminal. The baby's parents, knowing of Nityananda, approached the yogi with the customary gifts given to yogis and asked them to heal their child. Well, Nityananda refused to the disbelief and dismay of the parents. He sent them away and the baby died soon after. Well, a lot of people didn't understand that, and one of Nityananda's followers asked him why he didn't heal the baby and stop him from dying. How could such a beloved master of the yogi tradition allow a baby to die like that when he could have healed them? Nityananda said to his follower, You fool! You don't realize what was going on. 
That baby died to burn away the karma of bad deeds in his past lifetime. If I would have healed it, I would have interfered in that process. So really what Nityananda did do was coming from an act of, of love and not from any selfish reason. But sometimes we don't see that. Really the moral of the story is that from the outside looking in, we often misconstrue the importance or lessons learned from such harrowing situations. We judge through the lens of our earthly intellect, not understanding that everything is a learning experience and nothing is truly bad. Events that seem terrible to us also serve a purpose in the grander scheme of things. Look, I'm going to wrap up the video soon, as I can really go on forever. To get back to those fundamental questions, let's answer them one at a time. This video is by no means a comprehensive explanation of the nature of reality, but I want to at least answer those questions for you as food for thought for future videos from me. So first one is, what is the purpose of life? Well, Tom Campbell believes it is to grow up, evolve, become love, lose our fear, and reduce our entropy. Entropy, by the way, is basically randomness or the decaying of a system. Everything basically goes through entropy. So if you leave a home or a car and you never give it maintenance, it's just going to decay. That's entropy. By reducing our entropy, we move towards love and wholeness, which is really the goal of everyone on Earth. But most of us don't know it. That's because we're living in a simulation, which Campbell calls a virtual reality trainer for consciousness. We get to have free will, make decisions, and live with their consequences. This is the only way we can learn and evolve, or de-evolve, as that can happen too. Yeah, like Hitler. So, with that, I just answered the four fundamental questions I posed. Yes, this world is a simulation. Yes, there is an afterlife. But it's not what you think. It's just another reality frame where our consciousness finds itself after the so-called death of the body in this life. There really is no death. I know some of you are probably super confused at this point, which is why I'll make more videos explaining it better. Those of you familiar with Campbell can relate to this information and probably know it as well as I do. Others can intellectually understand the info, but are still rather skeptical. Look, it's all good, as we're all on our separate journeys, some more advanced than others, just like in a video game, but we're all going to get there in time. Well, I'll end the video here, as it's getting to be quite long. Thank you so much for tuning in to the end, I would truly appreciate you subscribing and clicking the notification bell to be alerted when I put out new videos. My external goal for this channel is to get to 1,000 subscribers as soon as possible, so any likes or comments you give me will help with that. Everyone that watches this, I love you all and expect another video out soon.